What if I told you that there was a spider so small other spiders could step on it? When you're the size of a grain of sand, the world starts to get really weird. Why is this jumping spider so small? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm heading to South Florida to find out. The coastal scrublands of southern Florida are one of the most unique habitats on Earth. As remnants of ancient island chains, the life that exists here is unlike anything else. Venomous widow spiders lurk in the palmettos, colorful snakes slink through the sand, and tiny praying mantises flit about under the veil of darkness. Somewhere in these sandy habitats is the smallest jumping spider in the world. For Neonella, the world is massive, unlike anything we can possibly imagine. When you're the size of a sesame seed, even the bark of a tree is like a vertical canyon stretching upward out of sight. The slightest hint of a breeze can carry you to uncertain doom, so these spiders largely keep out of sight. For us, we don't think twice about the layer of pine needles and leaf litter that lines the forest floor. Even the shortest human can walk right over it. But it's this overlooked habitat that hides some of the strangest secrets, and that's what I'm after today. Somewhere. Along the ground of this coastal scrub lurks a tiny spider that few scientists have ever seen. I'm searching for a millimeter wide needle in a haystack the size of an island. How the heck do you go about finding something so small? We're at the base of this sand pine right here, and at the basis of these pine trees is actually some fairly moist leaf litter. The reason we want moist leaf litter is because all the water in there means resources for a variety of tiny invertebrates, just like the jumping spiders right here looking for. Only the smallest particles of leaf litter and small invertebrates will fall to the bottom of this white tray because of the mess we have here. So if you look, small little grains of leaf litter. And if we do this enough, good chance we find one of these tiny jumping spiders. This is Mikey Green. Host of the YouTube channel Cool Critters, Mikey does research on the unusual invertebrates of these scrub habitats. From documenting rare spiders to some of the weirdest looking insects, he's actually found these Neonella before, so I'm enlisting his help. While a top layer of soil doesn't sound like much to us, to a spider the size of a grain of sand, this two inch layer of substrate is a complex matrix to explore. The crisscrossing of pine needles creates caverns that water can drain through, enriching the soil below. Sheltered by the leaf litter canopy, this microscopic rainforest gives rise to odd, slinking things. Alien insects slither through the decomposing leaf matter. Prehistoric bristle millipedes blindly graze the dirt particles. Odd purple mites hunt for prey. And somewhere in this metropolis of oddities, Neonella is hiding. By sifting the top layer of substrate, we're able to open a window into this strange subterranean world shining light on small creatures that seldom see it, and if we're lucky, catching a glimpse of a tiny jumping spider hopping around hunting for springtails. You got one? Yeah, a Neonella venula. The what yellow species, right here. Oh, it is tiny. Look at that next to his finger. <laughs> yeah, it was That's mine. an adult? That is an adult, yeah. I can't tell if it's a male or female from here because they're so tiny, they're but. tiny. Yeah, look at that. Wait, there's another one there. Oh. I see it. Wow. That's as big as they get. Mm hmm That's wild. Now this is one of the biggest jumping spiders I've ever seen. I mean, a biggest of the Neonella jumping spiders. You probably can't even see it in this frame because this is actually the smallest jumping spider in the world. This is a large adult and it's like a millimeter and a half long. This thing is like 1 50th the size of my pinky nail, and it's a fully grown spider. How ridiculous is that? Jumping spiders are one of the most diverse groups of arachnids on the planet. There's more species of jumping spider than like all scorpions and pseudoscorpions combined. And because of that, we have a ton of different weird little niches that these spiders have worked their way into in the ecosystem we live in. And this one is very, very specialized. See, we're out here sifting through leaf litter, through pine needles, 
through sand to find these tiny little spiders. Spiders that, compared to them, a grain of sand is a boulder. That is ridiculous how small these things are, but that is actually perfect for their survival strategy. These guys are tiny, and that means it can be very difficult to survive in the hot, blistering sun of this scrub oak habitat. And as a result, they're actually living in that second layer of topsoil, where it's nice and damp and moist during the day, and they're feeding on little mites and springtails. That's pretty much the only thing small enough for them to eat. Don't get me wrong, this is a venomous spider. They have venom, just like most other spiders on the planet. But I mean, the size of this thing, there's no chance it could ever be dangerous to a human. This would almost be more likely to be a parasite or something than actually be something that could bite us. But they're not parasitic. They're just little tiny ambush predators that are hunting through that matrix. And to do that, they need to have incredible intelligence. Just like all other jumping spiders, they're smart. Look at the way he's walking around my hand here. This is not the movement of a mite or a pseudoscorpion, something that kind of just feels around and just eats resources as it finds it. This is the movement of a fierce, smart, calculated hunter. He is probing the surface of my fingers here and scanning to see if there's anything, any threats, any food, piecing together his environment. And, you know, I, I mean, people point out that I'm kind of a hairy guy, right? And there's lots of other spiders and things that I'll handle and they'll kind of get, get stuck in my hairs as they're walking. But this guy is so small, the hairs are like trees to him. He can walk in between them, climb up them. They are no obstacle. They're only just an interesting jungle gym for him to explore. That is incredible right there. And this is a perfect example of one of my favorite things about jumping spiders. These spiders actually tend to be what we call microhabitat specialists. You might think, oh, when you think of habitat, you think of a forest or a desert or the ocean, right? But within a large habitat like that, there's actually all kinds of little changes in the structure that different little things can use. In a forest, you have multiple kinds of trees. In this scrub habitat, we have palmettos, we have evergreens, we have scrub oaks, we have this bottom layer of leaf litter and, and pine needles. We have the sand dunes. We have the open, like exposed sand. There's lots of subtle differences in how the habitat actually presents and different types of animals can use each mini habitat or micro habitat in a different way. When you have over 8,000 species of jumping spiders, there's bound to be several different kinds that can all exist in the same large habitat together without ever competing. This guy is not gonna compete with the spiders that are living in the trees that are much bigger, hunting much bigger prey. And they're not gonna compete with him because he's almost underground hunting tiny little things that are so small, those larger spiders wouldn't even see it as food. In fact, they probably wouldn't even see him as food. They could probably accidentally step on him when they're crawling around. That is insane. A spider so small that other spiders could step on it. And this is, in fact, an adult jumping spider. That is incredible. And just a testament to how diverse and weird the secret world all around us can really be. Who would have thought that the world's tiniest jumping spider would be living under our feet? I sure wouldn't have. Look at you, buddy. You are awesome. Watching this spider crawl over the sand and debris, I can't help but wonder what it sees. If we can see this spider thousands of times smaller than we are, can it see the microscopic life living in this substrate? I wonder what it sees when it looks at me. Life at such a small scale is so vastly different than ours, and yet it still finds a way deep in the leaf litter of these subtropical forests. Further north, Another jumping spider has found an even more cunning strategy to survive. In fragmented habitat of northern Texas, there is a spider that looks exactly like an ant. If you want to learn more about that weird little spider, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.